Hi everybody, I'm Kaveri. I'm a third year medical student in BGS Global Institute of Medical Sciences, Bangalore. I know first year is a very crucial year in the life of every medical student. They'd have just finished their NEET and boards and they'd have joined a new life of medicine. And what happens is the students end up becoming one of these categories. Either they get you know, too much stressed and they study a lot. This is one category. The second category is because they're frustrated with uh, studying a lot for need and both, they end up not studying. And the third category is they study here and there and then they do some smart work and they end up scoring really well. Whichever the category you might belong to, the important thing is for you to perform very well or to score a distinction in first year. And I'll tell you why. See, just take an example of a sport or a competition. If you win, that winner spirit in you will always motivate you to win more and more games or to perform well in the other games or competitions. In the same way, if you score very well or a distinction in first year, that will motivate through all your other years to score very well. And I think that's why it is very important for one to score very good marks in first year. And in this video, I'll be talking about the steps that I followed to get a distinction in my first year MBBS exams. I got 775 on 1000, that is 77.5 percentage and a distinction in each, in each individual subject. Now talking about the strategies that I follow to get a distinction, there are three important strategies. The first one is the individual strategy, the second one is mark distribution and the third one is chapter outline. Now in my video about how to score a distinction in second year MBBS exams, I have spoken in detail about all these three and I have left an i-card in the top for you to go and watch. I suggest you watch the initial part of that video and come back here to watch how you have to approach individual subjects. So talking in brief, individual strategy is, see now every individual is different and so are the difficult topics and the easy topics for each individual. So what is important is for one to find out what topics are harder and what are easier and then form a strategy as to how they will study these topics. Now second one is the mark distribution. Studying according to mark distribution is a must for any exam. You must always focus on those topics which have higher mark distribution and then focus on those topics which have low mark distribution. In this way, you will be increasing your chances of scoring high in any given exam. The third one is the chapter outline. Very few people tend to follow this chapter outline. So in each chapter, you have a small box given in the beginning of the chapter. And that box will give you the headings and subheadings which will be explained which will be given and explained in the chapter. Now what happens when you read that subheadings and all the headings given in the box, you will know all the concepts that is there in the chapter. So it will be very easy for you to effectively revise and remember because you know all the headings what are there in the chapter. You know the outline so you can easily frame the entire chapter by just thinking and adding concepts to each of those outlines. And one more thing what is very important is you have to always focus on what you're good at first. Once you build up what you're good at, now imagine you're very good at anatomy diagrams. Just make it even more strong. Try adding proper uh, labeling to it. Try adding even more features to that diagram. And once you perfect it, then focus on all those other areas like learning cranial nerves, which are a little more harder. Once you focus on what you're good at, you will be increasing your chances of scoring well. Don't stress on what you're bad at from the beginning you can pick up on it slowly and one more thing what is important is before your exams always revise from smaller books no matter if you have read from a foreign authored book or a complex Indian book if you don't revise from smaller books it is very hard for you to present in the paper you will not know exactly how much you have to write in the paper because in the bigger books you will have this much to read and remember. So for both purpose, always remember it is best if you revise from smaller books and it is easier for you to go and write the exams. Now let's see individual subjects. I'll talk about anatomy first. Anatomy and physiology are two such subjects whose base should be very strong because so many other subjects in your higher process in second year and final year will be directly related to these. If your anatomy is strong, your surgery will be automatically strong. If your physiology is strong, your pathology and medicine will be strong. So you have to learn these two subjects in depth. 
for uh, anatomy i used bdc bd saurasia to study all the organs and all the those stuff and i have used ib singh's embryology and histology for those two parts okay so in embryology you do not have to learn everything in depth certain concepts like neural tube neural crest and pharyngeal arches midgut rotation development of pancreas heart etc all these are the very important topics and only these will be asked in your exams and even if you take uh, entrance exams and next they won't be digging into some development of arm or fingers they'll always focus on important developments in embryology so your uh, primary aim should be to focus on those and in histology you need to obviously know everything because all the uh, diseases will be directly related see once you know the different epithelium the covering of each organ it is uh, you know going to help you on a longer run because in whenever there is a disease there will be alteration of these normal epithelial barriers usually so it is going to help you on the long run in your clinical practice and that's why you need to have a clear grip with uh, histology topics if you are a rs4 student i know you can't revise with some simpler uh, you don't have any you know question bank to revise before exams you go with smaller books like vishram singh selective anatomy it is one of the best books to revise for boards i am very sure about it and i revised with bdc because we had some important questions which we could look into the previous day okay so in paper what is more important is how you present see if you draw diagrams in on each question it is going to add up like anything if you know very little details to write for a answer just draw a diagram if you don't know the exact diagram it is okay you can always put in a diagram which is somewhat related to it now take the example of iliotibial tract when you draw it with origin insertion and the muscles attached and if you label it it is the entire answer when the professor sees that answer he will definitely know that you know the concept after you draw that just write the same things in words it is going to fetch you extra marks and for all the organs you can always write one or two clinical based uh, diseases so when you write one or two lines about it it is also going to fetch you half to one mark extra in each answer and that is going to help you a lot now let's talk about the second subject that is physiology as i earlier told you one's base in physiology should also be very strong i referred shambhulingam i'm a fan of indian authors that's why i went with shambhulingam you can always go with other books ak jain is equally good they have given all the points all the concepts in points and it is going to help you a lot and your Uh, concepts will become crystal clear even though you read ak jain or shambhulingam it does not matter physiology is so easy and if you finish reading the subject once you're going to remember it throughout and uh, if you are an rs4 student uh, read from that book called as venkatesh and sudhakaran it is a small brown book and it is very easy for you to revise with that book you can revise the entire book in one day it is so easy in that book and when writing a physiology paper always remember the essence of the paper lies in drawing flow charts physiology is a vast subject and so it will take a lot of time for you to write a physiology paper so always manage your time by drawing flow charts if you don't draw flow charts in your physiology paper your paper will definitely look like a black and white newspaper without any Im- images when it is scanned and whenever it is possible try to draw related images and as i told you physiology is a direct continuation or it will continue to patho and medicine so what is more important in the physio paper is that you write one or two clinical correlation after each answer so flow charts clinical correlation and uh, suitable or related images will increase the chances of you scoring at least one or two marks in each question those are your extra marks so always focus on it now coming to the third subject that is biochemistry it was my easiest subject i know 95 percentage of the people who are watching this video will not agree with me i think i followed certain strategies to study the subject and it made the subject so easier for me i'll be making a separate video on how to approach biochemistry for all those students who find it extremely difficult 
uh, while studying the subject one need to always focus on the metabolism chapters and the chapters at the end they are the dna and rna related chapters because they have the highest weightage and i know remembering cycles is not that easy so before exams when you have 10 to 15 days time you make charts stick it to your walls and see at least 2 to 3 every day that way you will remember it even though you forget to uh, you know revise it before exams i think if you uh, if you are revising it from last 10 or 15 days you'll be able to write it easily in the paper and coming to how you will have to write your biochemistry paper i know there are very very few diagrams in the textbook so you can always put in line diagrams as how you have understood the concept okay that will add and you can write the answers in points and when you drawing the cycles always make sure that the cycles are very big and the font size is big for the examiner to easily understand that way it will increase your chances of scoring high and don't forget to mention one or two lines about the clinical correlation because it will fetch you extra mark always and if you are an rs4 student you can always uh, revise with this book called as biochemistry by prasad it is small and he has given given all the concepts in a crisp manner and it is uh, very easy for you to revise from that book if you want to score very high as an aggregate it is very important for you to focus and give your 100% in internals exams practicals and viva if you perform very well in internals that will increase your chances of scoring high like anything let's take the example of two students a and b Imagine A has performed very well in internals and okayish in exams and B has performed okayish or bad in internals and very good in final exams who do you think has a better chance of scoring high together it is obviously A this i am telling from my own experience and it is that's why it is very important for you to focus on your internals and give your 100% to your internals so that it will add up and increase your score as a whole coming to uh, viva in anatomy they'll always focus on uh, some gross specimens they'll focus on foramens embryology specimens and x-rays i know it is hard for one to read from a book and go to identify gross uh, features so it is always better to you to see some videos in youtube channels and go so that you can easily identify and appreciate and show the examiner what the gross features are in physiology once if you studied very well for your exams it will be a cake walk just focus on hematology experiments focus on some respiratory uh, system questions and formulas and focus on umn and lmn lesions they these are the concepts or these are the topics where the examiners will be focusing on and in biochemistry uh, all the experiments will be very easy you don't have to stress on procedure always know how a reaction or how a test will appear and know when the constituents will increase or decrease in the blood and what diseases are associated with the components that you are identifying in urine or the sample given to you uh, that is most important if you are an rs4 student always focus on reading from smaller books before your exams or during your study holidays because you don't have anything like important questions to revise before exams reading from smaller books will always help you and i have already mentioned the smaller books which you can refer for each subject in each uh, chapter uh, in each subjects when i was talking about and one more thing that you have to always remember is you'll have one or two questions which are clinical based they're the clinically cl correlated questions and don't stress on it from the beginning if your concepts are strong if your base is strong you'll be able to identify the answer very easily in those questions they'd have given you one or two lines which will direct you to the answers so don't worry about it from the beginning just study normally and one more thing which is very very important is for you to not panic if you panic or if you get an anxiety attack before exam all that you would have worked for throughout the year is for no use right so always try to keep calm even though if you have not finished revising uh, like 50 percentage of the syllabus just focus on uh, reading important topics from them and it will always help yeah that's all for now until next time bye bye